What up guys and gals, it's Thursday, so you know what that means. It's time for some more reviews here, only on Comics Remixed. Today I got some, uh, one book that I told you I was going to review, and a surprise entrant on the, uh, the list here, so let's get right to it. Skip the introductions, because by now, three years in, if you don't know who I am already, go back and watch some older episodes. But anyway, I'm going to start with the one that was on the list that I had mentioned. Um, this one from DC Comics, Batman, the Joker's Daughter, one shot, cover price of $4.99. So I read this book, and um, first of all, let me go ahead and give you the creative team. It's Mark Hewitt Bennett was writing it, and Megan Hetrick was drawing it. Uh, how do I feel about this book? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. It's different, but it's the same, if that makes any sense. Let me, let me, for those that don't have any background on Joker's Daughter, I will go ahead and say that, and if you're interested in it, this does provide a lot of background information and it catches you up with what everything you need to know. Uh, gives you background information on her and how she became where she is today. Um, it talks about her taking over the Gotham Underground over in the Catwoman comic books. It turns out her origin is not exactly what everybody thought it was. She actually had a good life. She was good to go. She just wanted attention. So what she would do is create these elaborate stories, these very twisted stories, and put them together. You know, like, oh, I was raped. I was, uh, you know, I would constantly cut myself for attention. Um, I did this. I sold drugs. I, I was a prostitute. Just different, different horrible things that could happen and she would just tie them all together so she really had no origin think of it in the way for those of you who've seen the dark knight how joker would constantly just tell you you know hey do you want to know how i got these scars and the story was always different similar to this you know her background was always different um she found she is actually wearing the joker's ma uh, face excuse me as a mask and um she found it floating in the uh, in the sewers while she was underground and thought looked at it as a sign that he chose her he is her god he will one day return and she's a nutso basically I mean you gotta be um, but she felt that just wearing it wasn't enough you know she's gotta she chews the mask she sucks on the mask I mean the whole nine yards because she needs to have the blood she needs to feel the joker inside her and be part of her and it was funny because she goes to Arkham to kind of get some more background information on, you know, Daddy's castle. And uh, one of the orderlies there tells her, she's like, I don't think you're trying to be his daughter. You know, if you really need all that with him. Um, so after leaving Arkham and not getting the uh, the results she wanted, she ends up going after the guy who kind of started all this, Dollmaker. For those of you who remember back in Detective Comics number one from the New 52, Joker goes to Dollmaker to cut off his face. Um, so she goes to him and she requests, kind of uh, with no choice, that he sew the face onto hers to make it her legit face. But then she asks if he has any of, uh, you know, what does she have, what does Dowmaker have left of the Joker from that night? Like maybe some blood samples, tissue samples, something. It turns out he does have a little bit of blood left that's spilled on the floor. He collected it, put it in a jar, and put it away. So she takes it and she shoots it in her neck. So she feels the blood of the Joker pulsating within her. And she's like, yeah, we're one finally, you know. Um, at the beginning of the book, she ends up uh, calling out Batman and getting his attention of it very briefly. And um, he takes her to the location underground where Joker fell, for those of you who read Death of the Family. And he's like, you know, Joker's not coming back. He's gone. He hasn't been found. Uh, at the end of the issue, we're kind of teased with a possible Joker return. And she's sitting in the place she first uh, called home when she ran away and started this new life of hers. Whereas her pet cat has a, a note tied to his uh, collar, her collar, his collar, whatever the cat is. And so she decides, she's like, oh, wait, a note. She opens it. It's a purple note with green writing that says, uh, hello, beautiful. That's what it says. It's in red writing, excuse me. She, she looks at it, she says, a note, but who would know we're here? Purple and, and she reads it and says, hello, beautiful. She says, could could it be, oh, daddy, oh, God, who is daddy, who is God? It is you. 
and she starts laughing and crying hysterically. She's like, he's he's been watching. He's gonna come back. I'm more crying and stuff. She's like, I'm his I'm his prophet, his heir. All that I have become, or all will become, all my kingdom brought to ruin. The devil is going to come home, and all of hell will follow him. And this is the end question mark. Um, so those who missed out on the Joker one shot, Joker's daughter one shot back at Villains Month, where it had the three D cover and stuff like that. Those are technically uh, not her first appearance. For those who don't know, it was the last page of Catwoman number twenty three. Um, then it continued into twenty four, which continued into the Villains Month. But if you just want to get a comic book that's got a little bit of background on the character and kind of gives you um, a feel for the character, then pick up Batman Joker's daughter number one. Once again by DC Comics four ninety nine. Writing by McGuire Bennett, art by Megan Hetrick. Um, the writing was okay, you know, because that's what I'm basing it off of. I usually base my reviews off the story before I base it off the art. Um, as far as the artwork goes, though, wasn't horrible. It's not great. Um, I'll go ahead and give you a. I'll flip through a couple of these pages here so you guys can check that out and you can judge for yourself. Damn these ads. I thought this was a cool splash page, though. So. You see Batman hanging out in uh, the waterfall where Joker fell. But if you look closely, the Joker's eyes are kind of uh, sitting right there. So I thought that was pretty cool. Nice use of the uh, the background and stuff. But uh, here you got some artwork of Batman confronting her there. It's okay. Kind of loose artwork. Not too much shading, um, in my opinion. Like I said, kind of loose. There's a... A Joker shot for you. There's a flashback tale there. Going back and recounting what he did to some of the orderlies while he was at Arkham. Um, there's another splash page of her actually doing her, admitting later on in the issue that this was her legit first kill ever. And she's going ahead and she's slashing one of the orderlies. Kind of uh, screwed up there. You know, but like I said, the artwork isn't, uh, isn't so impressive, but it isn't so horrible. Here's a splash page of once she's got the mask sewn on to her. You know, she looks like she's enjoying it a little bit too much as it's getting sewn on, and I don't mean in a daddy-daughter way either. So, but, um, like I said, interesting to catch up on and get a feel for the character, kind of get to know what this character is about. Um, really didn't catch my attention, though. So, I mean, at a $4.99 uh, cover price, that also hurts the, the, the book. Quality wise, cover is not the greatest. Um, who did the cover here? I mean, it is wicked looking in the sense of reaction, but not overall. Uh, the cover was do done by jo uh, Georges Gennetti with uh, Michelle Madison. But uh, Batman, Joker's Daughter, one shot, number one. I'm going to go ahead and have to give this one out of four stars. Yeah. I mean, it was okay to read, but it's just not catching me. Even though it is a one shot, I honestly could care less about this character. So. There's that. But uh, one book that I wanted to talk about this week that was not on the list, and for those of you watching for the first time, the list I'm referring to uh, on the first episode two weeks or three weeks back now, I, uh, I had a list of stuff that had come out during our off season that I wanted to go ahead and read and review for you guys. But one book that wasn't on there that actually just came out last week and I just had to review, Transformers Robots in Disguise number 27. It is actually the 11th chapter of the current Dark Cybertron storyline going on, published by IDW with a cover price of $3.99. This book is written by John Barber and James Roberts and with art by Andrew Griffith. Um, currently in the Dark Cybertron storyline, what's going on is Shockwave has uh, found a way to use the powers of the dead universe and take basically all of life, besides anywhere that he is, kind of, and condense it into pure energy which he will control. There'd be no end, there'd be no beginning, black is up, white is down. He will control everything. Like when I say everything, I mean like the end all be all, the idea of the universe existing. You know, just I hope you guys are following me with this, but he will control everything. Um and the reason I'm reviewing this book is not because it's the ch uh, the chapter right before the final but because of something that actually happens in this book that caught my attention. Uh, this is actually the subscription cover. Cover The normal cover has an Autobot emblem on it that says a uh, death of a hero or a hero falls or something similar to that. And so when I read that on the cover, I was like, okay, I've got to 
I haven't read any of the Dark Cybertron stuff yet. I'm a big Transformers fan. Um, I've read up to the prelude to this storyline, but I haven't read this storyline. But I had to just jump in, miss the first ten chapters, and read when I actually saw. I flipped through the pages. I cheated. I says, all right, who dies? And I saw who it was, and I was like, wow, now I've got to read it. Um, so, yeah, I know you're kind of hoping, like, hey, who died? Tell me already. But I won't. Basically, to so the whole, like I said, the story of Shockwave has got control of everything. The Autobots, Decepticons, and the Nails, uh, the non-aligned intelligent life forms, I believe it stands for, are all teamed up, Megatron included. And, you know, we got to take Shockwave down. So we, we know what's best, you know. So they're going at it. Megatron and shock Megatron has Galvatron at gunpoint. Don't ask me why. Like I said, I haven't read it. I have no idea why Galvatron and Megatron are coexisting as two separate people. Um, I thought they were the same, and I'm sure I'll, every other Transformer fan feels the same way, unless it's just a different universe version. Because I noticed since the last time I read, Starscream has actually changed into the Armada Starscream as opposed to the regular. Um, but anyways, moving forward, so Megatron and Galvatron are going at it. Galvatron's like, I don't want to fight. Bumblebee looks at Megatron and he says, dude, you know, what are you doing? This is not the Autobot way. This is what we were fighting for. You know, you're just going back to who you were. And BAM! Bumblebee's chest gets blown out. Bumblebee's dead. That's right. Bumblebee is dead. Um, I told two people that Bumblebee died that, that normally don't read Transformers at all, and they both bought the issue. Um, so what does that tell you? And one was David. David doesn't buy comics very often. He actually bought a few books, and uh, that happened to be one of them because he just had to see what happened. And so, yeah, here's uh, here's the page. For those who don't believe, let's start. Let me back up one. So you see Bumblebee here giving Megatron the speech about, you know, this this is what we were fighting for. This is what we want. Blah blah blah. Autobot way, yakety schmackety, and then as his long, the last thing he said was, "See, we're stronger than we're stronger together than we are apart." And then, bam! Top panel, blown out, son. Continue looking there. Bam! He falls to a lifeless husk. Megatron says he's dead. Oh, and then who's that? Shockwave with the gun barrel, smoking. He did the deed. So yes, Bumblebee is dead, and then Megatron goes on to fight Shockwave, claiming he's dead, and Shockwave saying he's dead isn't even that's really not relevant anymore, considering that I'm about to end the universe. So pretty much everybody's gonna be dead. Uh, this issue has make made me wanna or not wanna, but kind of bump up my Dark Cybertron, my Transformers books back to the top of the pile to uh, hurry up and read them because I, I was reading them religiously fell behind you know it happens so I'll, I'll, I'll read it later but uh, after jumping 10 chapters of reading this one I was like alright you know what I've got to go back now and I've got to read the first 10 and i got to be caught up so hopefully uh, within the next few weeks I can talk about the finale of Dark Cybertron but in the meantime Transformers Robots in Disguise number 27 chapter 11 of the Dark Cybertron story arc once again Sorry about that. Written by John Barber and James Roberts with art by Andrew Griffith. I'm going to go ahead and give this book two and a half stars. The two and a half rating comes from the artwork. It's very hard to draw these machines as constantly as people do. So kudos to you on the art for that. Two writers to get this great story arc across and they killed Bumblebee. Um, one thing I was talking about with these guys as well was I noticed when a superhero dies, you know, be it Captain America, Superman, Spider-Man, we always know they're coming back. It's just a matter of time. And the same possibility with the Transformers, you know, it's just when their spark is extinguished, they're pretty much gone for good. Um, most of their sparks are kept in the chest. So with Bumblebee getting blasted in the chest like that, who's to say he's going to come back? But for some reason, when I just told them that Bumblebee died, their reactions were priceless. Uh, so who's to say? You know, they're robots, yes. But if the spark was destroyed, will they come back? Um, can't should they come back? There's so many Transformers characters, with a lot a lot of them so beloved. But I do believe Bumblebee will be back, one way or another. He's not going to be dead. But for some reason, his death in this issue just hits a little bit more than you know Spider-Man dying it, and Spider-Man 700 and all that other stuff. So Transformers: Robots in Disguise 27. Go pick it up if you can still find one. 
And with that, that's actually all I've got for this week. You know, I'm trying to keep them limited to two. Make sure you check out Brian's written reviews on our Facebook page, comicsremix.com, people. The hub for everything Comics Remixed. Breaking the fourth wall. Obviously, this segment here. Comics, present, Comics Remix presents the Collector's Corner with uh, Alex Martinez, the Lockup Wrestling Podcast, and the Spinner Act with an occasional spotlight segment. So, guys, check that out. Let us know how we're doing, whether you like us, whether you hate us. Please comment. We're all for the fan interaction. You know, a great example is here uh, on Facebook. We tend to get all these people who see our posts and none of them ever really respond. Please, if you see a post, catches your attention, like it comment something let us know that we're doing a great job let us know that we're doing a crappy job but just let us know you know we do it for you guys the fans we are always for fan or by fans for fans so um that's pretty much it next week we're gonna uh hit you guys with uh we're gonna go see captain america so we can't wait for that make sure you catch that and um that's pretty much it questions concerns comments comicsremix.com peace